Hi everyone, my name is Andy Park. Welcome to this channel. In this video, I'll be comparing three different mic setups to use in Microsoft Teams and see if there's a significant difference between them. Since I create content here on YouTube, I've got a few quality microphones, including this dynamic mic from Rode. So when I started using this mic in Teams meetings, I thought for sure someone would comment on the quality of the audio. But even after weeks of use, no one ever noticed. So I solicited feedback from my colleagues asking how I sound in meetings. And the general responses have been, you sound good. So clearly people were not noticing the quality difference. Uh, so of course I felt compelled to look into this and I'm sharing their learnings with you now. First of all, Microsoft Teams heavily compresses and processes the audio. So while I might be sending amazing high fidelity audio signals to Teams, by the time it gets to the other end, it sounds kind of distorted. So then I thought, does it even matter what mic I use if Teams will compress the audio anyway? Well, we're about to find out. I recorded three different samples using different mics, and to make sure we hear what the recipients would hear, I recorded the audio coming through the recipient's laptop. I did not apply post-processing to the audio other than slight volume adjustments. For this part, I recommend you put on your headphones. In the first recording, I used the mic that's on my laptop. This I think is what most users will use in a Teams meeting. They might have a headphone plugged in to listen, but would be speaking through the mic input on their laptop. Teams does offer some control when it comes to audio, and that's mainly whether you want to enable noise suppression and by how much. Noise suppression is helpful at reducing some of the ambient noise, like the hum of the air conditioner, the lawnmower outside, and basically any noise that is not identified as voice. But if we're in a quiet room, there isn't a real need to turn on noise suppression since we may be suppressing different frequencies of our speech and unnecessarily distorting it. Anyway, let's hear some audio samples with different levels of noise suppression using the onboard laptop mic. This is a sample with the onboard laptop mic and I am about 18 inches away from the mic input on the laptop and the noise suppression is set to auto. This is a sample with the onboard laptop mic and the mic input is about 18 inches away from my mouth and the noise suppression is set to high. This is a sample with the laptop's onboard mic and I am 18 inches away from the mic input and the noise suppression is set to low. This is a sample with the laptop onboard mic and I am 18 inches away from the mic input and the noise suppression is set to off. Next, let's try using a Bluetooth headset. This one is by Plantronics. And again, this is, I think, the kind of device that an average person might use for a web conference. Let's listen to the different samples. This is a sample with Plantronics BT300M um, earphone headset, and the noise suppression is set to auto. This is a sample with Plantronics BT300M ear head, uh, earphone, and the noise suppression is set to high. This is a sample with Plantronics BT300M headset earphone and the noise suppression is set to low. This is a sample with Plantronics BT300M headset earphone and the noise suppression is set to off. And lastly, let's try this dynamic podcasting mic by Rode. This is a sample with Rode PodMic three inches away from my mouth and the noise suppression is set to auto. This is a sample with Rode PodMic three inches away from my mouth and the noise suppression is set to high. This is a sample with Rode PodMic three inches away from my mouth and the noise suppression is set to low. This is a sample with Rode PodMic three inches away from my mouth and noise suppression is set to off. Okay, so for me, the onboard laptop mic didn't sound too bad at all. 
Although it did sound a bit echoey, especially compared to the dynamic mic, but with the noise suppression set to auto, the voice sounded pretty clean. And keep in mind that I recorded these samples in my home office right here, where I have a high vaulted ceiling, a hardwood floor, and no fabric furniture. This means there are generally a lot of echo in this room. So if you take your meetings in your living room couch or your bedroom, you may produce cleaner audio. The dynamic mic, while it sounded rich, you can definitely hear the distortion when the noise suppression is on. For this setup, it sounded best when the noise suppression was off. Dynamic mics are good at only picking up sound that are in close proximity to the mic, rejecting noise that are distant. So generally, we won't need to engage noise suppression when using this setup. The Plantronics headset, I think, performed the worst. It's definitely passable, especially with the noise suppression set to auto or high, but overall, the voice sounded distant. So in conclusion, if you are thinking of investing in an external mic to specifically improve your audio quality in a Teams meeting, I would think twice. Most of the high fidelity sound you would get from a quality mic would be significantly reduced through Teams compression anyway. And while the pod mic definitely sounded the best, it's only since we were doing a side-by-side -side comparison. For people listening to our voice on the other end, I don't know that they'll consciously notice the difference. I think you might be better off finding a quiet area for your calls with lots of soft surfaces and objects that would help dampen noise reflections and reduce echo. I'm curious to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comments below. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye for now.